They don't want to see me rise No They just want to see me fall When I be giving my all I'm just gonna do it my way Hey everybody, this is Mwadib, bringing you a video uh, on the repo generator that I have in my tools and parsers Git uh, repo, and just want to go over this tool with you. Uh, there's other people out there that have shared uh, a similar tool. Um, you've probably seen the base code of this one, the one this is based on. Um, done a lot of updates to it, um, fixed a few uh, bugs that were in it, some other things. Um, and just wanted to, to get this video out there. I'm going to be doing an update to my repo, or rather the, uh, the Git repo that this tool is in for you guys. And I wanted to do a video for it first to, to show the tool off to you, show you how to use it, uh, and go over everything. And then I'm going to do the uh, update <clears throat> and get all that taken care of for you. All right, so uh, this is, again, the uh, repo generator and generally you when you have a uh, repo on github or other uh, locations uh, you'll want to put this in a folder uh, such as I have it here in this one underscore tools alright and in there is gonna be uh, excuse me four files and the one file is the script itself the one is just the the version number of the tool uh, it's currently on version uh, Want to say 1.4, uh, 1.4.0 to be exact, and then the template file, and this is the template for uh, the add-ons, uh, the add-on.xml for your repo. So this thing will not only you know keep your repo updated when you make changes to your code for your different add-ons, this thing will generate the actual repo itself, the initial repo add-on that your users will install. All right. So that, that's the nice thing about this one. Uh, then there's the config file here, config.ini. And this is the one where you configure the name and all that uh, directly in it. So that all that gets used and it looks the way you want it to. All right. So we're going to go ahead and jump into this. The first thing we want to do is edit the config.ini. All right. And I'm going to drag my... Uh, notepad plus plus over here for you all right and this is what it's going to look like it's just going to be a default uh entries here so the first thing we want to do is adjust the display name after the equal sign here so we're going to call this tutorial repo and the id this is what it's going to look like under uh, the Kodi add-ons folder the directory it goes into so generally you want it something like repository dot and then a short name since I'm calling this one tutorial repo, we'll just call this uh, tutorial. So that's going to be the folder that it's going to be in. Uh, it's going to be version 1.0.0. Uh, repo author is, of course, going to be myself. And the summary, official name of the repository. So what you want to call it here. So uh, this will be the official tutorial repo for the repo generator yeah whatever all right now this next line here uh, is the ex excludes line so anytime it compiles your repo and creates the zip files so for users that download them these are going to be file extensions uh, separated by a comma that you want to keep out of the zip file for example, if you notice here, we got some default stuff. .psd, which means Photoshop files won't be included. .pyo and .pyc, uh, which are different uh, compiled Python files. Uh, you'll see these in your, your Kodi folders after you've run an add-on, for example. Then .gitignore, and then .ds underscore store. All right, you can expand this. Uh, if you, for example, have other files that you keep in there with your source code but aren't needed by the add-on, like the Photoshop files, all right? You do a lot of artwork, you keep your Photoshop files in there, but you don't want them part, as part of the zip, uh, you want them here. If, for example, you have some files in there that are 
dot um, LIC and you don't want any of those to be in your add-on when people install it you include them here that's what that's for all right now the description is just kind of a short description of what the repository is for Here's my little example for it. Repository for the tutorial video made for the repo generator. All right, now down here in the section called locations. All right, this is gonna be the URL of your repo. So generally, and you wanna use the, the raw name, like if you're on GitHub, you see how this one here is. Uh, the only thing you need to change in it is first we wanna update the, the username here. All right, and that is going to be, let me bring up a new GitHub window here, and I'll show you what the tantrum repo. Alright, and the tantrum repo, when you get into it, you know, github.com, TV. that's my username. Alright, so uh, that's what I want for that part, and then the repo name. So it, as I click on it and go into one of them, like this one here that's going to be right after my username so that's going to be this part right here so I'm going to copy that out put it in there alright and as you can see here when I go into my repo when I first click on it this here is all my add-ons alright the source code for them so if I click on this folder you're going to see all the files the PSDs the PNGs everything alright and then there's my underscore tools just like I have it in our example here all right where it's uh, the test repo and then underscore tools so for the sake of the video here I wanted to show you this one where it's live and how I, I had this one here set up so now I'm going to open up a new incognito window log into github on the one that I have that test repo on for you guys so you, you can see that slight little difference there. That's if I can remember uh, what my username and password is. Yeah, there we go. All right. So I'll log in to GitHub, and now of course my repos are down the side. Here's test repo. So I click on it, I go straight into it. You see that underscore tools in the README, uh, just like you've seen on my local copy. All right, and if you're not sure how I got that on my computer like that and looking like that, um, I did release a video on how to set up your very first GitHub. And you can definitely go into that, watch that video, and you'll that'll get you up to speed to this point. All right, and it's going to be in the same playlist as this one, uh, so you'll be able to find it real easy. All right, so now I'm going to jump back over here, and if I could find it. All right, so here we go. There's going to be the the username, test tantrum. So we'll go in here, and where the username was, we'll put that in there. And then test repo is the repo name. So we'll replace that one with that. Now, I'm sure if you're looking at this address up here, you're thinking, well, it, how did he get that name? Or that, that path, that raw.github user content. Well, if you look at the readme here, all right, I can click on this and it shows it here on the repo. If I click raw, which is just the base test file, or a text file you're going to see this address up here and that's where the raw dot github user content dot com slash the username test tantrum slash the repo name test repo slash master and then it's going to be the file name so it's going to be readme dot cm dot md so if I was to do this for example in something in that tools folder 
it's going to show the same thing. So if I go into tools, after master, it's going to have underscore tools and then the file name. So if we click on this here, and then click on raw for this file, you're going to see the test repo slash master slash underscore tools, like I said, and then slash config.ini, the file name. So that's how it reads those. All right. Just wanted to, to let you see that and, and hopefully, you know, you, you understand how that address was, you know, came about for me here in the example. And we only need to take it to the root. So to slash master. And I want my zip files, the ones that are made for my add-ons to appear in a subfolder right off of here. So that's why I have output path equals zips and then a, a forward slash. All right, that's going to be the, the folder that it goes into off of the master. All right, just like how you have the underscore tools, it's going to put it in zips. So for the, the sake of the video and, and keeping this at the top of the directory structure, I'm going to put an underscore in front of zips. So it'll be underscore zips. All right, that way it's going to be just like my repo for the tantrum repo. If you notice, underscore zips is right here in the root of the repo. And that's where it puts all my zip files. All right. I have all my source code for all my add-ons, including the repository right here in the top. All right. And then the zips folder, underscore zips, is where it puts them when it builds it. All right. And when my repo, when you install it in Kodi, that's the folder it goes to to pull them from as well. All right. So we can go ahead and save this now. All right, make sure it's saved. I'm going to close that. And that's all there's going to be to for the config file. All right. Now the next thing we want to edit or look at is the template.xml. And this is the template, again, that it uses to make uh, the add-on.xml for your actual repo add-on if you don't already have one. So it takes the stuff from the config INI and it puts it all up here. You see these little things, output path and URL and all. And that's where all that comes from. All right. Then anything else that you need, for example, if you need to link to the universal scrapers, you want to have that in here. So let me show you the tantrum repo XML. That way you can see the difference. And I'm going to show you the template. Uh, that way, it's going to be more uh, kind of real time for you there. All right. As you can see here, this first part is all the same. That's the same in both of these templates. But my tantrum repo links to a few other repos. So I have this other stuff down here. This one here is for the Universal Scraper, which is a directory entry and the XML, just like it would appear in their own repo. All right, uh, here's one for the one that Spotify is in. Uh, here's one for the Resolve URL by Jay Sergio. And then uh, here's one for the uh, Python code and all in one uh, from Total Revolutions repo. All right, so you would want to include these in your template if you wanted these to be in there. So for example, I'm going to include the modules for all, but I'm not just going to copy them out of this template. I want to show you how to do it. You how to include what you need. All right. So in order to do that, you can either go to the developers of that repo that you're wanting to include and ask them what you need or better yet, you can go to their repo file. You can install their repo in Kodi. All right. Let's go down here to my Cody light build. And I'm going to go in here, go into the add ons folder. And let's see here. Do I have the repository? There it is. Repository.universal scrapers. And I'm going to open the add on.xml from there. All right. And right here you see this. All right. And it looks like this one ha, is outdated. Or wait, no, the repo should be good. It's 1.0. It's the add-on, I'm sorry, that's uh, updated past that now. So here is the actual repo. 
all right for them so I'm going to take this this part right here these four lines I don't need the the extension part all right just those lines and I'm going to copy them here I'm going to go back to my template and if you notice here we're wanting to put these in a you know a directory tag at the beginning and end so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and drop them in here below the hashes line there all right I'm going to drop them in there and then I'm going to go in here and put that little directory tag I'm going to cut this one put it down here after that one all right now I'm going to do the control shift alt B since I have the XML tools plugin installed and let it reformat this all right so now it's got it formatted it's got my repos info that'll be here at the top and then it's going to include universal scrapers repo there and let's go ahead and look at another one let's see if we can find another one that you know just to include just for the sake of this here all right and let's go ahead and do now let's do the tantrum repo I mean you might as well and this will let you see one where you're wanting to pull the information from someone who may have a lot of them in there like I do all right and up here at the top is the one from my repo itself all right pointing to tantrum repo so I'm just gonna pull this one and this one only go back to my template and we're gonna do the same thing go down here drop it in there and this time I can just copy the the two directory entries because I'm lazy and I don't want to type it out even though it would probably take less to do that than copy and paste them but okay there's those all right this is again is in the template so I'm gonna save it all right I'm gonna close my templates out close these out all right everybody that's gonna be it for part one here going over the configuration how kind of the overview of setting it up uh, the next video we're gonna be covering uh, actually running it all right let you see that real time adding some plugins uh, to the repo how to run it again to do updates things like that cover the whole basis for you uh, not just your initial repo but upkeep on it when things change what to do uh, before you run the script things like that and get all that covered for you uh, as always if you have any questions leave a comment down below and I'll see you in the next video Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If you liked it, be sure to leave a comment down below, click like in the corner, and subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.